Um, in terms of Greg Berhalter, I think he earned a lot of respect from this team in not playing Gio Reyna. Even mm-hmm. though Gio Reyna is supremely talented. And I don't know Gio Reyna personally. He's a good kid. He's a, he's, he, went, he, he, he went and hit a banger two days after the World Cup, you know? Right? Like, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a damn good kid, and he's super talented. This is only going to help him. How many people have we have played with, worked with, who have had bad attitudes at times, and then it, it comes back to haunt them, and it forces them to change? This is a moment where he's going to grow from it and understand, yes, you're competitive. Yes, you, you want to win. Yes, you want to play all the time. But sometimes it doesn't work out. So how do you handle it? Because the way you're handling it now, it comes off as an a, a, a entitled baby. And no one has time for that. So you have to figure out a different way to you act out on your emotions, to convey your frustration. So I think for, from that standpoint, yes. Um, he's going to be, a, 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 I think, a, a su- super successful player. But with it coming out in the way it did and him having to, to put a post out and, and basically confirm the story and, and kind of give the reasons why, I don't see how Greg sticks with this national team at this point because too much information has gotten out. And I, I know there's there talk of negotiations with, with Greg and re-upping the contract, but now it just seems like, yes, I'm sure well, – yeah. Things can, can be fixed like that. and healed, but yeah. I, I think ac- across the whole group, it might be difficult to come back from this. There's, yeah. there's. Before we get into that side of the conversation, and happy to get into that, I wanted to mention just from Geo's perspective. You're 19, and your dad played in four World Cups. Mm-hmm. Your mom was a highly successful soccer player as well, and there must be some expectation, whether whether the parents comes from them or not. You probably feel it. I do want to say, and I hope that Claudio is telling him this, that Claudio's first World Cup was in 94, and he sat on the bench. He didn't, he didn't play. He went in there, got some experience, and then ended up becoming one of our most important players for the next three World Cups. And it ended up being captain in, in the last one in 2006, maybe even captain in 2002. But, you know, I, I just I think there's a lot to what you're saying to grow from. I also wonder, when you think about him as a person and understand his story, that his brother passed away when he was young, his brother was older. And you wonder how much he carries that with him and how much he feels like he needs to, that's a lot. It's really heavy. And I'm not going to pretend to know anything about that because I didn't lose, I haven't lost a sibling. I've lost parents at a young age and blah, blah, blah. But I just think there might be some weight that he's carrying there and and what he feels like he has to do. And and when those expectations weren't met, either because his dad was highly and his mom was highly successful. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're, you're, you got to do it for your, your, you know, your brother who passed away. That's a lot. That's a lot of emotional weight that you're carrying. And I think he's carrying that because, because one of the things that I mentioned leading into the world cup, anytime we watch Gio Reyna play, we all know that that guy is unbelievable when he plays with a smile on his face. When he's not playing with a smile on his face, when you can tell there's something bigger going on, or he's, he just feels like he's carrying so much on his shoulders that it just it, it weighs him down. And, and mm-hmm. when you can tell that he's playing free, we've seen it. We've seen it with Dortmund. We've seen it with the national team. The kid's another level. So how do you figure out whether it's a coach or, or an assistant or a mentor or whoever it is that can help him get to that sweet spot? Because once he finds that sweet three. spot, he is going to be unstoppable. Go ahead. <laughs> Charlie if, just said U3. He's talking to yeah. himself right now. He's if, staring if, at himself on a screen and he's if, got a question if you, for uh, If you were in Greg's shoes heading into the World Cup and you, in your mind, were, were always going to play Timothy Weah on the right, Christian on the left, and whoever up top, Josh Sargent, I'd be right, whoever, would you have kept him on the on the roster? Would you have – how would you have dealt with that situation? Would you have played him still? Would you would you have would you have still started him and found a way to put him on the field? Or would you have said, you know what? I'm going to to kind of keep keep this team, this locker room together because guys are, are are clearly frustrated with his attitude and the way he's he's approached it. Go ahead, Heath. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I just talked for like three minutes straight. It's your turn. I mean, just so I understand the the the, the question. Accurately, Charlie. You're talking about would I take Geo to the World Cup? And if you're in the same situation as Greg, what what would you have done? You've you've already announced him. He's on the the roster. You go to camp, you tell him, 
I'm um, Timothy Way is starting at the right, Kirsten on the left, and mm-hmm. we're we're not changing MMA in the midfield. So you're unfortunately on, on the outs. You're you're a substitute, and then he does that following yeah. all the way through. Yeah, part of, part of me feels like. I almost don't believe that like Greg told him at the beginning of the World Cup, your role is going to be limited because I feel like that's a weird thing to say to somebody, right? right I at agree. the beginning of the World Cup, like that's a weird motivator, like to say. Maybe the, it may have been that in this first, uh, how we see it right now, this is the team that we're looking at because obviously they, he went with almost a consistent team all the way mm-hmm. through. Um, but I don't know if you'd be, I don't know if you'd say like something like, you know, your minutes are going to probably be, be hard to come by, right? Mm-hmm. I would guess that there was probably some body language early on the moment he started to feel like perhaps his minutes were going to be limited to come by. And then it required a conversation that then led to some real like visualizations of, of the frustrations, right? That would be, Mm -hmm. again, I'm creating a whole world now. So I, and I don't want to do that, but that sounds more logical to me than Greg going into world cup, telling like a bunch of guys like, Hey, you're not probably not going to play, you know, like that's when you go into a team, Roles start to become clear. There's going to be a few guys like your Gio Reyna that should be starting when he's at his best. Um, he's coming off some injuries. Maybe he doesn't fit what they're trying to do in the beginning that you have to address. But it seems like it's probably a little bit of like, like it's the chicken or the egg that it was probably body language that led to a conversation about the role and the responsibilities of somebody in the team, which led to even worse body language or sustained body language from there that needed to then have a serious conversation. You know, um, that would be how I would see that playing out, at least how I know in teams, because I don't think it'd be a very smart management tool to tell somebody they're not going to play um, when you're trying to keep well, everybody but, hungry. No, no, I agree with that. I, I wonder if it got into the point though, with his body language where like, I just have to say something to him. Yeah. That's what I, th- that's what I think it happened is like, he probably and, saw going through training, like, okay, this group, you know how it is starting. You, 11, you know who the like, starters okay, are. Three yeah. more, three players switch in and you're like, okay, maybe them. And when you know that you don't get repped into that group, you're like, huh, something's <laughs> off. Uh, right. You said, like you said Bornstein. It. I see you know, when, that. Bornstein. You know, when, 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 when the, when the coach is in the middle and he's got the pennies and he's like, Hey, um, Scally, uh, you, uh, jump in right back here for a little bit. And, uh, Charlie, you go up, you go up top, uh, switch with, uh, Josie and, and uh, Jimmy, you go into center back and you're on the other team going, huh? I mean, those changes. <laughs> Maybe I'll be in the, I'll be, I'll be in the next rotation. I'll be in the next rotation. And that pisses you off. Right. But there's oh, that, a time and a place for a minute. You, it, it hurts. hurts. Yeah. Um, but it probably led to a lot more of those things where it's it's very easy in those intimate environments to huff and puff and get attention if you want it, right? You can show up late, you sit in the back, you've got your hood on, you've got like, you know, you show your body language, you're kind of detached from the group, you finish your meal, you go to your room, you do all those little things because you want people to know that you are not okay. Um, and those add up to things where now maybe a leader like Yedlin goes, this is my guy and something's wrong. And Greg's, mm-hmm. you know, he's saying something to Greg, Greg's saying something back to him or guys are talking. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, there's some potential like poison here that we need to figure out. And that's, I agree with you, Jimmy. That's where I think it had to start. Cause I don't think Greg's walking around going like, just so you know, you're going to average about seven to nine minutes a game. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. 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 But I want you to be happy with that type of thing. Well, I wonder, I wonder if it got to the point and he said that because he was looking for a positive response from Gio. Like I'm going to snap him out of this. I'm going to let him know that, that he needs to pick up his game or whatever it is. And when Gio didn't respond in that way, I wonder if that's was then the catalyst for, well, let's, uh, this isn't going the way that I thought. Well, He's not I, responding I, the way that I thought. Let's, let's, I'm going to put it to a vote. And, would uh, you have sent his I, ass I, home? I, I, <laughs> hey, I, I mean, think it, about it must, that. honestly, if, if, he's going listen, if you're taking to it to 12? a vote, Charlie. No, no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't that many people. It was not. It was still not. It, from what let's I heard, say, it was nine to eight. It was nine right, to eight. Let's, let's say nine to whatever. eight, though. You had eight yeah. people being like, send his ass home. I'm done with him. Uh, yeah. he can't, I mean, that's he can't how bad be his behavior must have been. If he's like touching to your point before, Heath, about like every single facet, including the showers of like where he's at being down and out. Uh, you, you Guys, wonder, when I'm like, mad at home, you will, you will know when I'm mad at home, you know? Oh, exactly. I'll, but so you have, I'll, you have I'll slam people. our soft closing closets, you know? I'll yell at the kids. I'll do like, you will know. In one way or another, yeah. no matter how distracted you are, that someone's upset in our house. You know, like it's the same thing in a locker room environment or in a team environment. But, but for eight people to say they 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 didn't want him to be in part of the team anymore, I mean, that is that's a lot. And you only also, had nine that the, were like, who was the well, swing vote? This, who this was the, the who was the last the, vote that was like, hey man, yeah, you're the, the swing, swing vote, vote in this in this election. You know, like 
you are the most important person in the history of U.S. soccer. Well, I, and, I, I uh, who knows? Maybe they didn't tally the votes until the end, but but still, but yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this because for a lot of people that's saying Geo's not fit, blah, blah blah, he's fit. Well, they have trackers for for training sessions for games because of Geo's attitude and his mentality. His numbers were far lower than where they should be. So. They said he's walking way, around and like you could say like walking. he's not fit. Yeah, walking, so yeah. that was that was the the their way of saying, oh, Gio, instead of saying horrible attitude, we're gonna send his ass home. We're gonna say he's not fit because his numbers don't match the 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 levels that or you are required be. to yeah. play in a World Cup and not only play in a World Cup, be successful and contribute to how they've played. And if you look at MMA in the midfield and how they played together over the course of the four matches. I would say he made the right decision in midfield considering yeah. the England match was fantastic. Considering he went with Timothy Wea over Gio Reyna. Those, those moves were, were, were well, they worked. I, I don't have a problem with Gio Reyna not starting because those players played well. They took their chance. You could argue, man, if Gio Reyna started instead of Weston McKinney or, or Yunus Musa or Timothy Wea, maybe he would have had more success if not the same, but, from what we saw, th those guys performed. Against Holland, maybe you could have said, hey, this could have been a, an opportunity to, to kind of switch it all up on, on the Netherlands and say we're going to go in a different with different players because we need some fresh legs, some more energy. We're, we're going we're gonna to play a different way, defend and counter, all of that. However, uh, I think when you have a player that's really a, a negative spot in, in, in the locker room, it's hard to – to make that change.